Hello everybody, this is Mark from Shadow Wolf Designs here with another Lightwave 3D tutorial. This tutorial we are going to be going over how to put grass or fiber effects onto an object. And I'm going to be working with a flat ground because this is easiest to do it with. Otherwise you have to work, worry about stuff passing through your object. First off I'm going to displace my ground. It's subpatched, smoothed and everything. So we're going to open up its properties, hit subdivision order last, right here. And then we're going to go to deform, displacement map. And we're going to change this to procedural texture. And I obviously don't have smoothing on my actual texture, so I'll have to fix that. But we're going to go texture value and bump this up a little bit. And I'm going to increase the contrast. I'm going to increase the frequencies. Actually, I'm going to take that back down. I'm going to increase the small power. And this gives us more of a hilly terrain. I'm going to hit use. Now I'm going to automatic size it. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Hit use texture. Go ahead and close out of your properties. Then go to surface editor. Make sure your object is smooth. Look at how much nicer that looks. Alright, so fiber effects is what we use to get grass. And the first thing you have to do is click on FX tools up at the top and come down to the very bottom and hit fiber effects. Now I only have one layer and whatever you want your grass or other fibers on is going to need to be on its own layer. So you click the layer and hit activate this activates it but you don't see anything and that is because you actually have to click this eyeball on only have this eyeball on when you're actually working with your object um, once you're done working with fiber effects uncheck the eyeball so that way you're not destroying your ram because this is a ram hog alright so what we're gonna do is I'm going to show you some of these options. Now max fiber density, this controls how dense your fibers actually are together. And I'm going to bring this down to 10 and look at how much that thins it out. This cluster radius, cluster itself increases how they, they clump together. Now if I put that back down some but I increase the cluster radius, it increases how big of an area those clumps go to. Okay, going down here, don't worry about the fiber type, but come down to fiber width, and I'm going to bump this up to 4000. And this actually changes how thick your individual fibers are. And I'm going to decrease gravity to make my grass stand taller. Alright. Styling. Because that was all under Geometry tab. Now if we go under Styling, we can play with Clump. And this one is pretty effective. So if I hit Clump, turn that up, we'll turn that up to 100%. You'll notice that if we zoom in here, these they start forming more little clumps in here and a lot of these you can actually turn to over a hundred percent so let's go a thousand percent and you'll start to notice that it gets really really clumpy like almost like when your hair sticks together when it's wet that's what this is basically doing um Kink is how much it bends. I haven't really had a use for this. Splay is when it comes out, it splits off from each other. Um, I don't. I sometimes I use that depending on what I'm doing. Uh, I haven't really used sway, or sorry, not sway, stray. Swirl is pretty self-explanatory. It actually just twists it 
which can give you a really good look if you're trying to do hair. And obviously if you click random, it does it randomly. Alright. Tuft is another one along with clump that you can set up. And it has a similar effect, but it's it's almost like groups it together in little tufts. Um, and then those tufts can be clumped together or have anything else done to them. The scale affects the length of the hair. Or the fibers. Now you can come in here to random length. And whatever percentage you have, it'll take this scale. And then, say if I did 50%, it would take and we put this at 150 the scale just so it's easier numbers to work with this will go 50 percent of 150 either way so it'll go down to 75 and up to 225 alright these others part angle is mainly for hair um, I've never played with that that's actually a newer feature and I've never played with bump because I normally leave it at the default of 100 percent all right, let's go into bundle. This is a new feature, which I actually have not used yet. But as you see, it has twist, braid, and none. For this assignment, since you're doing grass, do none. Okay, rendering. This is where it gets very important to go into VPR. Because if you look in VPR right now, you don't see anything. The reason for that is, one, your shadows. If you turn down self shadow and cast shadow, it'll help the color come out a little bit, but it's still too dark. So come over to shading, and decrease the diffuse, increase the luminosity. And I'm going to bump this luminosity up to 100%. And we're going to decrease the diffuse all the way down to zero okay so I'm gonna come back into shadows over here and turn this down to like two percent now you notice that there's it's still hard to see the grass so we're gonna come over here and go make sure translucency is at zero and transparency is at zero just to try and make sure that we can see everything alright specular color I'm gonna change this just on the off chance that that's gonna hold anything up we're gonna go back into color and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go color mix and increase this to a hundred percent and change the highlight to 100%. Now I'm going to do a quick render with F9. Alright guys, I'm back. I'm sorry about that. Um, it turns out that F9 is, stops my recorder. So instead of hitting F9, I'm going to just click the render frame option. And it's going to take a second to render. And while that's going, I'm going to talk about some of the issues that you'll have with this. Now this actually isn't a bad render. Um, I'm going to adjust my camera so we can get a better view of it. So come into hit 6 to jump into your camera. Click your camera button down here. And then you can click and drag. Now, I am not sure why it's not showing up in here, but it is showing up on a render. So, I'm going to hit render frame again. And this is going to render out our grass. And that's some, it'd be some interesting hair with the green skin showing through. Or some really dry grass on some green ground. So, that's basically how you set up grass. It's not too difficult. And we got fiber effects right here. And again, all it is is messing with these 
colors and the shadows. And let's go back into shading real quick. The specular color, I'm going to turn that to a brown. Because if you notice on the last render, our fibers had some reddish tint to them in certain areas. But now it has this brownish tint which goes a lot better with the, the dry grass and this is actually one of the better renders I've had but you go to output you don't really have to worry about this options you don't really have to worry about again it's all rendering the shadows need to be farther down um, lower otherwise there's too many shadows and it's, it's hard to see um, these options, these are going to be the color of your grass. So if I actually wanted green grass, I would go in here and, uh, this is darker by default. So I'm going to pick a darker color and I'm going to pick a lighter color for this one. And I'm going to go here, pick this one. And then I'll pick this one, but I'm going to adjust it just a hair. And now I'm going to see what that looks like. So render sorry not render globals render frame and fiber effects whoa that is really bright the fiber effects will really um, mess up your render time so you want to be aware of that and adjust accordingly so for this assignment I would suggest doing like a small potted plant that you make sure you get a close up on but don't do your whole ground in grass it, it just won't look good now that last render it was very very bright and didn't look realistic for grass so I'm turning down the luminosity I'm gonna turn up the diffuse some and I'm gonna render it out again and a lot of this if it's not showing it to you in your viewer you're just going to have to play with it and play with it. A lot of single frame renders. And that's getting closer to what I want my grass to look like. Um, I'm going to bring down the luminosity some more. Bring up the specularity. Or diffuse some more. I'm going to take these colors. And I'm going to turn highlights down to 50. Back to where it was. And color mix, I'm going to turn to 75. And again, this is all about playing. If you're not comfortable playing with this program, you need to get used to it because that's the, the best way to learn. And that's starting to look like a better grass right there. Still a little bright. But we have this, this nice bit of different colors. Different shades. And I think what's throwing it off is this green right here. So I'm going to come back here. And I'm actually going to pick a darker one. And now I'm going to do another render. And that, that looks like some good grass right there. That was the one color that was throwing it off. But we hit a board. Okay. Now, if, say this is your ground, you're not going to want your grass to be that high because it's just it's just way too high so what I would say is go into styling bring the scale down to let's try 20 percent and you'll notice the shadows a lot of them are gone and that's because the grass is a lot shorter so let's hit render frame and we'll render this out Now this looks horrible. Part of the reason is we got to bring this clump down. So I'm going to bring this to 20%. I'm bringing it way down. Um, I'm going to take the swirl down to 2%. And let's go over to geometry. Cluster. I'm going to bring this cluster radius down. I'm on a 5 meter grid. I'm going to bring it down to 0.5 meters or 500 millimeters. 
then I'm going to do a test render to see how it looks. A lot better. Still not where it needs to be, but a lot better. So maximum fiber density. I'm going to bump this up to 100. Fiber width, I'm going to crank down. And this is just froze up on me a little bit because it's taken more render. More time to render because I just multiplied this by 10. I'm going to take this down to 2000 or actually I'm going to leave it at 200 just to see how everything looks and I'm going to do a render frame and like I said this is all playing and I'm just trying to get one that looks looks decent on a smaller scale okay we're getting there. And this is taking even longer because there's a lot more fibers in the uh, the model. Now with longer fibers you don't need as many. Shorter fibers you need a lot more. And that's mainly because this is going to take more to cover the area. And that actually looks like a very fine fur almost. Which isn't what you want if you're going for grass, but if you have a monster it works. So, and that has to do with the fiber width. So if we bump that up, we'll bump that up to 2,000. Oh. Let's see. And do a render frame. And this is going to take a minute again. And probably after this one, I'm going to end this tutorial, and I'll let you guys take it from there. Because now you know how to actually put in fiber effects, so you'll know what to look for. And then it's all about playing with it to get the look you want. And there are tons of tutorials on layout or uh, light wave fiber effects. Um, I believe his name's William Vaughn. He actually works for Lightwave or for New Tech. And he, he has some great tutorials. One of them, he's putting the fuzz on a tennis ball. And it, it ends up looking great, and you can follow his tutorials, and they're great. And this is a lot closer to what I want. I'm thinking probably 4,000 would be better, back to where it was, and then uh, increasing the fiber density some more. Um, but I'm not going to put you guys through watching this anymore. But one thing I will suggest is that once you get your fiber set up, uh, click the check mark underneath um, the eyeball just so that when you're working on the rest of your stuff it doesn't destroy your computer because like I said fiber effects is a ram hog uh, that co about covers it for fiber effects and setting up grass I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial if you did leave a like below. Um, if you have not yet subscribed to me and you would like to see more of my videos, please click this subscribe button right next to my name below the video. And if there's anything else specifically that you would like to see done into a tutorial or put into a tutorial for Lightwave, uh, just leave a comment below in the comment section and I will do my best to accommodate you. Uh, this has been a tutorial on fiber effects again. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a nice day.